Okay. Uh, so here's going to be the table for x squared. Now negative 2 squared means, well, let's see, I'm going to write out the calculation over here, and I'll write the result here. This means negative 2 times negative 2, and that's 4. Okay? So when I ask you to justify your calculations, I mean write out the details of how you're calculating this, what rule you're using, kind of the way I wrote these out. Okay? Reasons for what you get, because if you just write down a wrong result, I don't necessarily, I have to guess at how you got it. Usually it's pretty obvious how you got it, but don't make me guess. And don't make yourself guess. Show me and show yourself exactly what you're thinking, so that I can give you a little note. So that's what, think about this, okay? Okay, so anyhow, we get four. And I'm going to go ahead and put the details of all of these down here. It's a little, gets a little redundant, but it doesn't take that long. Um, okay, so we get one, right? And then we get negative one half times negative one half. Now, a, a number of people got stuck on this one because you didn't write out what it means. Negative one half times negative one half, right? So if you do negative one half times negative one half, well, it's a fraction, okay? And fractions are not well reinforced anywhere in the curriculum that I know of, okay? So you might get stuck there. But that means one times one divided by, I don't really have room, I'm going to have to go to a new line, that'll kind of complicate things here, but it means I'm trying to decide how to do this. Negative 1 times negative 1 over 2 times 2. You multiply the numerators, and if you got a negative sign, the negative sign kind of goes on your numerator, okay? So when you multiply fractions, it's very simple. You multiply the numerators, you multiply the denominators. When you add fractions, you don't add the numerators and add the denominators, although I see a lot of that. you got to get a common denominator and all that stuff. Okay, anyhow, that's going to be 1 over 4. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, right? So this is 1 fourth. And I want you to write these out as fractions and not decimal numbers. Okay? You know the decimal equivalents. But write them out as fractions uh, because we want to get more comfortable with fractions and because that's how you write it out exactly. If you had 1 third, how would you write that as a decimal? It has to be repeated. Okay? And that gets cumbersome. Uh, although it's handy, I mean, it's, it's not a bad thing. Okay, anyhow, zero squared is zero because zero times zero equals zero. One half squared is One times one over two times two, right? Multiply numerators, multiply denominators, and that's one fourth. And I'm not sure why I wrote one half again. Obviously, brain labs. Okay. Okay, for one we get One and for two, we get four, and the reasons are pretty obvious. Okay? So I want you to write things out in this type of detail. 
And there are two reasons for that. One is so if you're messing it up, I can see how and help you fix it. And number two, because that reinforces things that you need to reinforce. Now, not everybody probably needs to reinforce it, but uh, I think it's a good idea for most of you to do that. Okay, well. Same values, we're going to do 1 over x, right? Okay, so let's see. One over negative two is negative one half, so we get negative one half. One over negative one is negative one, so we get negative one. One over negative one half is one divided by negative one half is one times negative two over one equals one times negative two over one, which is negative two. A lot of people got stuck on this. A lot of people didn't do that. But if you write out what the law for inverse or a, a negative exponent is and write it out carefully, you can get there and then you start getting used to these laws. Okay? zero is undefined. You can't count to one by zeros. So I'm going to write down here undefined. Okay, one half. Um, bunch these up a little bit, but one divided by one half equals one times two over one equals one times two over one, which is two. So there it is. It's two. Uh, for 1, you get 1 over 1, which equals 1. It might seem tedious to write all these out, but again, you have to reinforce. That's just 1 over 2. And that's 1 half. So there's the table. Okay? And now let's do 2 to the x. We get 2 to the negative 2. What's that equal? It equals 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. So we've got 1 fourth. Two to the one is negative one half. It is one half. Two to the negative one half. Now, what's the one half power of a number? Well, I don't have time to go into a detailed explanation, but it's the square root. Again, I'm not sure how it is that people don't know what the one half power is, but we need to make sense of that. And what's the square root of 2? What do you know about the square root of 2? Well, hopefully you know it's an irrational number and can't be written down exactly. 
number that never repeats and never terminates. It goes on forever. It starts out 1.414. That's just a warm up. It goes on forever. can't be written down exactly, so we skip it. And I'm going to say skip. But I say, why we skip it? Okay? It's an irrational number. Okay? Now, what's 2 to 0? Sorry? No, it's defined. It's perfectly well defined. Any number to the zero is well defined. Any number to the zero is one. Again, incomprehensible to me that our curriculum doesn't do this well. But it's easy to, it's a rule. But there's a reason for it, and we'll discuss the laws of exponents a little bit more next time and see what the reason is. Okay? But you got to understand the laws of exponents to do it. half the same thing. We skip it. Two to the one is two. Two squared is four. So those reason. Okay? Got it? Okay, well now we're going to graph these tables. Okay? And I expect you to be able to do this. I think People generally come in here pretty well prepared to graph these tables, but let's do it quickly. We've got like four minutes. Uh, so, no point in starting another video. We'll just do this. Okay? Okay, so, um, we start with an x axis. and a y-axis. The x-axis will start at negative 2 and it'll end at 2. In the y-axis, for this function, our range, our y-values run from negative 2 to 2, don't they? Now we need a little more scale, so we're going to divide the interval from negative 2 to 0 in half. That'll show us where negative 1 is. In the interval from 0 to 2, we divide in half. We get this, right? So now we've got almost all of our x values except the negative 1 half and the positive 1 half. How do we get those? We put them halfway between negative 1 and 0. Now, I can't tell you how many times I see graphs that people make by hand because, again, a calculator is put in everybody's hand and you think you graph by putting things into a calculator. It's not how we graph. We don't even use a calculator for graphing in this course ever. Unless we do. There might be time when we do. But that's not how we get graphs. We get graphs by plotting them and by transforming them and combining graphs of functions. Okay? I often see one half, one, and two just marked on a set of coordinate axes. You got zero here, so here's one half, here's one, and here's two. What's wrong with that? Something's seriously wrong. The intervals are wrong. Huh? Like the space in between are wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, one unit would be this much, right? But then one unit is this much. Yeah. 
a unit of one half is not the same as a unit of one. So that's why we subdivide. It's a very simple process, so I don't want to see any of this, okay? I mean, if I see it, I'll politely correct you on it. Say, so please never do that again, okay? Okay, and then, of course, we have our one here and our negative one here. And now we just plot the coordinates. Negative two, negative one half. That means when x is negative two, y is one half. Well, here's one half. So we come over here from one half, we come up here from negative two, and there's a point. Right? Now this should be very familiar to you. But if calculators got overused enough in your course, maybe not, I don't know. What you did for homework last time should help correct that. So negative one, one, that's this point. Negative one half, two. Two closer over here so I can make that point. Negative one half, two is here. But it's not negative. Don't do what I just did. Uh, these points aren't on the graph because those are negative numbers. That's why I tell you you got to keep an eye on me. Okay. Um, okay. So here's your negative one half. Now you're going to have to come over here and down here. Here's your point, two, negative one half. Then negative one, negative one will be here, and negative one half, negative two will be down here. So here's negative two, negative one half. Negative one, negative one. Negative one half, negative two. And then you can see that uh, one half goes with two, one goes with one, and two goes with one half. So you get these three points. And I guess I probably ought to make them whatever this color is. Um, okay, now I'm going to label the points. And then to make the graph, you're going to connect these points with a curve. But you're not going to connect this point to this point. Because you don't connect the graphs across a place where the function is undefined. OK? So kind of important. connect because the function is undefined at x equals 0 and any connection you would make from this point to this point would go through x equals 0 and give you a value at x equals 0, right? And since there is no value at x equals 0, you can't do that. And what ends up happening is this thing just keeps going down and this one just keeps going up and they approach the y-axis as asymptotes. Yeah? I was going to ask you, um, if you're using the y-coordinates software, these, none of these are negative, so why would you do Again? None of these are negative, so why does it go down? I'm doing the one over x. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I should have specified that. That was my fault. So, yeah, I've been pointing back to this, but I'm probably standing between you and my arm. You couldn't tell I was pointing. That's okay. Okay. I probably didn't make a clear enough gesture anyway. All right? Okay, so 
Your homework is going to be basic. I'm going to give you like five, six, seven functions. You've already seen three of them. You already got the tables. I want you to graph them and associate them with the graph packet. Then I'll have some questions about them. Fair enough? Okay.